Okay, I'd like to welcome everybody to the weekly Zoom meeting for Cambly Chess Club. Um, this week's meeting is to be about a tournament that didn't quite finish. The, the most recent candidate tournament uh, was halted halfway due to the coronavirus uh, outbreak. So I think from that first half, Colin will be, Colin Lyon will be talking about some of the games played in that tournament. So over to you, Colin. Okay. Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, if you saw the tournament, so I actually watched quite a bit of the tournament because I'm at home, so I'm able to watch it. And uh, at the halfway stage, Maxine Lagarde, who shouldn't have even been in the tournament, he was actually like first reserve and he came in because Rajabov decided to drop out. And he came in and Jan Nepomatch, is it his name? Yeah. Anyway, they were both leading with four and a half point six. So I thought I would show games that involved them playing in it and show why it is that they are currently leading. And the first game was played by Nepomatchi. He was black. And in the first round, he had to play Anish Giri. And this Giri is like Karam, very well prepared in their openings. And so in this game, Nepper Manchley was really caught out by the other guy's opening. But he had the confidence to play his main line, despite the fact that he, he thought Giri might well be ready for him. And it's quite interesting how he fared, despite having that sort of like handicap. And Giri started off with one night F3. And I... Never actually played the move I always play against one knight f3, which is knight f6. Very flexible move. Just wait and see what white is going to do. And he went 2c4. I normally play e6 if people play this against me. But Never actually played c5. They continued copying each other. Now, I don't think this is called the four knights because the four knights variation is where you've played e5 rather than c5. But it's some sort of form of what they call the symmetrical. And uh, it featured in Fischer versus Spassky, but they continued by Fee and Chetuin, um, their pieces castling, and then Fischer played d4. And uh, I've got a feeling he might have won that game against, Ka against Spassky. Anyway, Gary decided to go for the immediate e4. And the move e6 was played here, which does rather tempt people into the idea of playing knight b5. I don't know much about this variation, but it's quite similar to the Sicilian defence in a way. I play line the Sicilian defence where this pawn would be on there. And in this position, I would go knight b5. Uh, and it is one of the main moves that gets played. But the top move that's actually played here is G3. And that's what Giri played. And notice here, so the first time Giri has ever reached this position in practice, a surefire sign that a personal surprise has been prepared and awaits his opponent. Still, Nepo has not yet paused to contemplate any sort of phantom peril, especially considering his narrow and very aggressive opening repertoire as black makes him fairly used to such nastiness. Well, it's quite true. If you play the same thing all the time, then you are opening yourself up to opening preparation. But of course, on the other hand, you're basically saying, well, no matter what you do, you can't really surprise me. There was a player called Wolfgang Ullmann. He was like this, and he always played the French. And Fischer once said, it's easy to prepare against Ullmann because you know he's going to play the French before the start of the game. Well, on the other hand, it didn't seem to bother Ullmann any, any at all. So Nepomanchi just continued with his same opening repertoire. And this reminds me of something that Edmund Mednus said once. He said he had to play Julian Hodgson, and everybody said to him, don't play knight f6 against him because he played the Tromposki and he's been being everyone with the Tromposki. And Edmund Mednus said, if you don't believe in your openings, you shouldn't play them against anybody. So uh, I thought that was quite a good philosophy, really. Anyway, he went here. And he went here. It's quite a surprising move, isn't it? 
consider the most reliable continuation in this position, even if Ian or Jan, I think they call him, don't they, has experimented with night G4 and even with A6. Well, if you play A6, you have to be willing to get your bishop, I should think. If if um, if black plays a6, um, is the idea that white plays knight d6 and then? Uh, uh, yeah, he would have done, and yeah, okay, won the bishop pair, and it also has a certain command of the dark squares. I don't know the theory to this line, so I'm not quite sure. I never actually would have played against that. Hmm. I imagine he would have moved his queen. Normally, in those lines, you can move your queen to e6, e7, and have some sort of swap off with queens if white wants it. But uh, I've played lines similar to this in the Sicilian defence. It looks like he's getting into trouble, here, doesn't it? He moved, and I'm going to check here. Mm. But he actually plays knight on f to g4. So he went e3. What move do you think Black should play now? Why didn't White play h3 the night before to drive that knight away? Why? Because he probably thought he'd play queen takes f2 check knight. Oh, yeah. Well, no, it's not actually check knight. But it's pretty destructive. Uh, what about queen c6? Queen c6? Hitting that rook and letting the knight come in on f3 with check. If the rook moves. Uh, I, might try, I might try h3 against that. Oh, sorry. What am I talking about? Queen c6. Yeah, that's an interesting move, actually. That is an interesting move. I wonder what he would have played against that. Just d4. What about d6 for, for black? Well, are you going to play h3 against that? Queen yeah, the... c6 is an interesting move. I'm not saying e, e, e4, and then, I was, and then I was thinking, yeah, you probably take c4, but the queen, the knight on g4 is hanging then to the queen. So maybe e4 is play e4, or you can always just go back. Oh, no, they, no, oh, yeah, hmm. yeah, yeah, you can just go back to b6, but then you could play queen d2, maybe. You saying e4 in this position? No, no after queen c6. c6. Yeah, this is actually queen c6. That is quite an interesting move, actually. What about? Has been played in certain games. C. So there must be a good answer to queen c6. You're actually attacking the rook, aren't you? Knight c7 check is kind of playable, but it may or may not be good. Well, against Queen C6. Against Queen C6. Yeah. Because you've got, after Queen takes Knight, you can play Queen takes Knight. But it's only a swap, you know. Uh, I don't know if it's that good. Mm. Mm. Queen C6 is an interesting move. Yeah, it is. I tend to agree that you may have to play E4 there. Then maybe Queen C5 after E4. Yeah, but then you can play Queen D2. Hmm. Knight takes Bishop C4. C5 maybe. Sorry? Bishop C5 maybe after E4. Oh, yeah. 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 I just think with Queen C5, you, 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 um, hitting that C5. Well, you can play that if he moves the e-pawn, yeah. Um, 
interesting. I think Queen C6 is a really interesting move. And I'm not quite sure how you would have met it. Uh, uh, actually, Colin, do, do you have H3 in reply to Queen C6? Is that, is that totally stupid? Well, you may have to sack this. Well, H3, Queen takes the rook. Yeah, then Pawn takes Knight. And yeah. You're the Knight on E5, and you're threatening Knight C7 show. Yeah, so maybe you can... But, so maybe, well, seems a bit... Yeah, hairy. that looks as good as anything. Yeah, I think that's probably probably it, Colin. I don't know. Probably what you do play. Well, not to have to work it out over the board much, <laughs> didn't it? <laughs> yeah, I know. It's nice if you come prepared and know yeah, what you're supposed to <laughs> do against these sort of moves. It appears from Colin's database that against Sorry? Queen C6, against Queen C6, your database says White wins 100% of four games. Yeah. 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 Well, do you want to cheat and see what? Normally gets played against it. Yeah. yeah. H three, all four games. So it looks like you're right, Colin. Two points for Colin. Mm. <laughs> what happens after H three? Let's see it. Uh, oh, nice well, in all four points. games, they've gone knight F three. I just take the rook. Well, you take the rook, uh, and, and White takes the knight on G four. He's still got. Uh, you got knight f3 check. Well, can you do You're not getting out of there, Paul. How are you getting out of there? <laughs> not only have you got knight c7, but also knight d6 could be a bit of a problem. Because you could then... Swap off the pieces, and then you got the idea of following up with knight coming in here. It's a bit of a mess, though, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, it is. I, I, did you say king d, d king e two, Colin? Colin P. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, uh, after pawn takes knight. Uh, um, oh, but knight c seven check gets played. Is it okay? Knight f three check king e two. Yeah. I can't but, say this looks obviously better. It's not just that knight c7 is, is a threat. Knight yeah. d6 is also a threat. Because if you take this and you take that with the queen, then your knight is threatening to come in here again. You know, I think you're getting more than enough conversation, aren't you? Hmm. Mm. Okay, what did black play? What did black play? Well, black played a move that you haven't suggested up to now. So I'm quite surprised you haven't. A6. H3. Takes here. Takes here. What would you play now? Knight takes c4. Yeah, knight takes c4. Yeah. Now, apparently, queen b3 is the most popular move here. It's what normally gets played. But apparently, Gary had been doing some homework and he decided to play something different. And he decided to play rook c1. And I suspect the idea is if you play knight b2, you're going to play queen b3 then. And if he goes knight c4, is, is, is you'll go rook... knight takes b5, maybe. I was going to say, is white playing knight b5 here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's probably threatening that. So what would you think black would do now? He can't take b2 because after queen b3, the knight can't yeah. go back to c4 because the, the pawn's pinned against the queen. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I say. If he went back to knight c4, you just take the pawn 
No, he's the night night. Yeah. He's in all sorts of trouble. He takes the pawn. Yeah. So black should play d5 here, shouldn't he? Black should play d5. Black did play d5. But he would have been on his own resources here because he wouldn't have expected rook c1. So what he plays next is really quite impressive because he keeps finding the best moves. So b3 happens. Any ideas? He didn't play e5, did he? Yeah. No. Yeah. Knight a3. No. Bishop play knight a3. He can play bishop b5 check, I think. No, because the knight's covering it. Oh, of course it is. That's the whole point of knight a3. Yeah. Knight d6. Bishop takes knight. It's not easy to guess this move. Bishop b4. On the mute. Oh, okay. no, Bishop a3. No. Not Bishop b4. Bishop b4, well done. That's what he did play. Pretty spectacular move, eh? Exclamation mark. Well, here some serious calculation was in order, and 18 minutes were spent on this move. The Craven Knight be d6 is completely not in the spirit of Nepo, and even still after bishop takes d6, bishop takes d6, bishop takes b5, white has a simple and comfortable game. So he's been caught out, but he's found the best move. So what's his idea? Rook a3, I guess. Rook a3. Could he have even been really cheeky and played rook eight? <laughs> yeah. No one's got bishop e5. There we go. Let's move. And let's move. There's Queen's under attack. So he moves here. But I think Gary was still in his opening preparation incredibly. So we get a swap off now. And it seems that all this was prepared beforehand. This is the action move which holds the variation together. Even in the given situation, Giri essentially has no choice. Everything else loses. And this made all his previous moves very quickly, while the last is best described as being executed in the blink of an eye. So he's still playing all these moves almost instantaneously. So why didn't he take the take the rook? Was, uh, rather than moving the king? Uh, Why didn't he take the rook? Let's have a look. Why didn't he take the rook? Just an interesting statement. Well, black gets a very strong pawn. Yes. Set up. Yeah, he probably just takes this pawn. Well, after bishop takes, he plays queen takes bishop check, and then b takes, uh, c takes b, b takes c. Right, bishop takes rook, queen takes. If the king moves now, then he probably takes this pawn. And yeah. he's threatening to play something like this, followed by this. 
Yeah. Probably won't even move his king out of the centre. Yeah. Yeah, so he must have calculated all this and felt he was good enough. So he plays king here, and this move happened. I'm going to say he must have taken some time over this move. Quite an amazing move. Well, Gary now played g5. <clears throat> so e5 got was the answer. Apparently, queen takes a2 was worth looking at. But if he played queen takes a2, he plays takes, takes, and then brings his king here, apparently. And that's quite OK for white. So B4 got played, G5 and E5. So how good is this pawn going to be? Now Gary apparently should have played King G2 and it's about level. But he didn't play that, he went queen b1, and queen b1 is given as an error. Apparently black should have replied with d4, but black in turn made a slight error and played this move. Now we've got queen d3. Obviously he didn't want this, he didn't want to lose this obviously. Apparently, Gary spent 20 minutes here. He could have played queen b5 check, apparently. It's still fairly, fairly level. But this move probably really caught Gary out. Yeah. Apparently, Magnus Carlsen was commentating on the game and he indicated almost immediately that Nepo could spend this, play this move. But Nepo spent 12 minutes on it. It wasn't the first move that came to mind, my mind anyway. Mm. Yeah. No, it's pretty clever though, isn't it? Yeah. If you take either way, C2, and now you've got problems stopping oh, the pawn. Right, yeah. So it's a pretty clever move. But Gary played queen here. Now this happened. Now, now it's Gary's turn to find quite a clever move. I think it's clever anyway. E4. E4 got played. Yeah. Who would you rather be here, white or black? Yeah, black's got the extra pawn. Oh, uh, yeah, but he's not going to keep it. Is he going to keep it? No. Four. Well, Gary actually played rook h4 here. Mm. Apparently, if he played queen to c4, he exchanges queens and plays bishop f5. And apparently, white is the one fighting for a draw. Okay, so now he played this. Gets the pawn back. Yeah, it's got slightly the safer kin, I suppose. 
Well, he's played Castles here, but I've actually got a note saying King F7 is the best move. I've been through this with my computer, I expect, so. Now he did, now he made a mistake. He should have gone Rook H4 again. And he went here. Well, you can see his idea, if he pins him, he's gonna play Bishop takes Bishop. So what move did he play? Just moves the king. Yeah, he just moves the king. Yeah. Now he moves out of the pin. <clears throat> but he plays this move. And at this stage, he decided to sacrifice his queen. Mm. Wow. Quite mm. a surprising decision. Yeah, well, he didn't have to, did he? No, I don't think so. But maybe he's going to get it back. <laughs> mm. I don't think so. Well, apparently, according to the notes, he could probably still have drawn this game. But yeah, I'm a bit surprised. I would think a bit longer about sacrificing my queen if I was in that situation. I, I know I wouldn't want to sacrifice that. But it's still very hard for Nepo Manchi to win. Apparently, Rook H4 draws. So he played this move. King e7, rook g7, king g6. Of course, this is just better than the king and there's actually where he wants to be, really. Queen f3, I'm not going to give you any of my pawns. Rook h8. E4, he's got to watch out now for E3, hasn't he? See, well, this requires a big calculation, doesn't it? Well, what did Nepo Manchi play here? It's got to be E3, hasn't it? Well, you would think he might play E3, wouldn't you? Hmm. But he actually played the move H4. And after this move, he played this move. Which is a rather nice move, because obviously he can't take that pawn, because if he does, Queen E1 check, followed by Queen takes Bishop happens. But he did take it. <laughs> oh. I think he's soaping the south of Fortress here. You don't know what a fortress is. It's where you, you've got sort of less material, but the other person can't find any way to penetrate. I actually had a guy who set up a fortress against me in a postal game. And in the end, I decided that the only way I could break the fortress was sacrifice my rook for his bishop. And that's what I did, and I ended up beating him. So I hadn't been willing to do that. We would have gone round and round forever, I think. Well, he plays this move here. Must keep the pawn. No, in a way, I'm a bit surprised. But of course, he, he'll probably bring his king up and attack the rook. But he left, he allows him to win this pawn.
Apparently, he should have gone king f1 now, but he went rook h3. You can understand why he did that. Maybe he's hoping to push this pawn down the board. Black's plan is now based on winning the h pawn with a subtle reshuffling of the king to d4. While perhaps not in the fastest possible way, Black confidently brings this plan to life. It's a good example of how patient you have to be sometimes in chess. Queen g4. No, I don't know why, but he didn't take the pawn here. I'll bring the king in sooner or later, aren't he? I actually wonder here because they've re repeated a little bit, aren't they? I wonder if he was in some sort of time scramble. Maybe there's a new time control at move 60 or something. Yeah. I don't know then. I, I find it hard to understand why he didn't take the pawn. Where I am. King F1, Queen G2. King G2, Queen D1. He's trying to run him out of moves, really, isn't he? Rook E3, King F5. Finally making some progress, we hope. I think he was actually stuck to one there, wasn't he? Yeah, I think so. It was a nice finish to this, actually. Looks like he can't win, doesn't it? I've lost my place there. Mm. What move are we up to? 73. Oh, sorry. Did you play that? Somehow I've lost track of the game. Sorry, I'm just going to have to go back here a little bit. Rook h3, king g4. That's where I've lost track of the game. Rook f3, king f4, rook e3. Oh dear, I've lost track of the game somehow. A bit annoying. I don't know quite what's happened there. I've somehow lost track. So I lost track of the game. Rookie three. Let's go back to this. This will tell you. Well, I must be right up to it because it's a whole load of moves. I, I Rookie three. King H4, but he can't play King H4 here. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what ended up happening. He ended up with his king here. That pawn's gone. He did take that pawn. He ended up with his king on this square. And he ended up with his all these pieces here, here, and here. And he played this move. Remember, this pawn's gone. And that was... So he had the king here. And this came here. I don't know. 
And some, but like I say, the king is here. So he can now win, can't he? King there, king there, king there, king there. And then the pawn came in. I don't know quite what happened in that game. I lost track of the game somehow. Anyway, that's what ended up happening in that game. You say that uh, Giru was playing his, his moves right to about move 25 really quick, like it was opening practice. Uh, it yeah, it wasn't quite as far as 25. Well, was it? a long way. It was about to move 20 or something. So he played that King F1 move as if he'd seen all that. It seemed like an awful lot of opening preparation to get a pretty difficult position to hold. Well, the interesting thing is that Rook C1 isn't regarded as all that good by the computers. And uh, I know that most of these guys, they check this opening preparation with the computers because Caruana recently won a really nice game as black when he played the King's Indian. And he played, his bishop took the knight on C3 so he could get pressure on White's E4 pawn. And apparently it's quite a new idea. But he obviously got it from the computer because when I put all these moves in the computer, they were all computer moves, you know. So it wasn't his idea at all. It was the computer's idea. And uh, these guys normally check all these things out with the computers to make sure they're quite good. And if Gary had checked Rook C1 out with the computer, which I'm sure he must have done, he would have come to the conclusion it's not all that good. But maybe he thought that his opponent would have trouble finding all the best moves. And if he didn't find any of the best moves, then Gary would clearly be better. That's all I can think he thought. It's pretty impressive that the Nickel League did find the best moves in that line. Well, I think it is because it's not nice when you get caught in your opponent's preparation. And when they deliberately play all their moves really fast like that, they're actually doing it to intimidate you. Hmm. You know, I've got all this worked out and you're in trouble now because you're going to sort of fall for some line that you shouldn't play. It is an intimidation thing because it's been said that often it's a good idea not to bash all your moves out immediately and make it so obvious that you are in your opening theory. <laughs> I must admit, I tend to do the same thing. If I'm in my opening theory, I just bash everything out immediately. Don't forget, Colin, that if... Um... You are in your preparation, and you, and you play very quickly. You're um, confirming to your opponent that they are finding the right moves. Oh yeah, you are. Yeah. So in fact, you're paying them a compliment. And yeah. uh, I would I would not do that. I would play slowly, suggesting that they're not finding the best moves. And uh, so if I, you're just you're just by playing quickly, you're confirming that they're on the right track. Oh, you are. But on the other hand, you're. I mean, if you as soon as you stop, have more time on your clock. Yeah, but I mean, if you if you're in a position that you prepared, and you suddenly take ten minutes, it kind of suggests your opponent has played a move that they should they, they that wasn't. Yeah, I know. It's a very double-edged thing. Some people think that you, you know, if you took a bit of time over your moves, they wouldn't be quite as on edge to really find the right moves. Are you suggesting, John, that you should? tactic you know uh, psychologically feign a bit of surprise when they've actually played a good move or mm. the best move i, I tend to not prepare. well I, I think it, it it provides confidence to your opponent yeah they're, I see your they're on their own yeah and you're and you're just cracking moves out it means that they're doing the right thing as well yeah i, I mix up the cracking the moves up and then taking a while even though i don't understand the whole situation it's quite uh quite disconcerting to your opponent then because they think you know what you're doing <laughs> you know i mean i <laughs> just bang any old rubbish out quickly i mean i remember a, a foreign <clears throat> a four ncl game where i knew i was very familiar with the position but uh, it was a very sharp position and i played slowly you know even sacrificing time on the clock i didn't want to confirm that my opponent was finding the right moves hmm. And uh, it, you know, it can undermine their confidence. Uh, and I did win that game as a consequence, really, because they they went into meltdown. <clears throat> yeah, it's an interesting discussion. I've had this discussion before with people, you know, where you should just bang out all your mates immediately, 
all the time, you know where the only theory is. Of course, the second you don't bang out all your moves immediately, your opponent knows that you really are starting to think and you're not in your opening book any longer. Yeah, so why not just do that? Uh, well, sometimes I have taken a little bit of time over my moves, but I must admit, I do tend to play them quite quickly because I like to get ahead on the clock, I think, quite early on in the game. Mm. You know. I'd rather be ahead on position. I'm not too bothered when it's a county game. I don't know about you, Colin, but I feel a lot more relaxed when I play county games because that extra half an hour somehow makes you not worry very much about the time. Well, well, yeah. Sorry. What's it like that? County games? I think um, Colin's talking specifically about Chilton Need, where you have a time control of 40 and 2. Right. Uh, well, no, it's all in 2. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, sorry, everything in 2. It's guillotine, so there's yeah. no, no increment even. But you've got that extra half an hour. Somehow mm. I feel more relaxed when I've got that extra half an hour. Yeah. And I do for sort of hour and a half games or around 20 plus 10. Mm. Anyway, that was the first game. The next, next game is between Maxine Lagarde and Liren Ding. And Liren Ding really has, well, I'm going to say he's going to have to win to actually every game if he's going to qualify because he's currently bottom of the table. And uh, this game tends to suggest why Maxine Lagarde is doing rather well and Ling Duren is doing rather badly. And this is one's Is Ling Duren Ling Duren related to? Ding Loren. Yeah, he might be. Okay. Well, I think they actually put their first names last in China, don't they? Well, there's the, the not, a lot of nationalities do that. And the correct name of Anand is uh, Anand Vishwanathan. Is that? And the correct name of Canero is Canero Humpy, for example. Really? So the family name comes first. Anyway, a lot of people are playing the Petros these days. I do think the Petra is a very good opening, but it's a bit boring, in my opinion. <laughs> so I, I play this. Um, Maxine Lagarde is white. Hardly anybody is taking this night at the moment. I've noticed that. Good. Yeah, because I think that's also pretty boring. <laughs> Now, now, the variation that's gained a lot of um, popularity is this one. Now, I, I play this. I've been playing that in a lot of games. I quite like it. Um, but this move has been get, played a lot. It's been played by Shiroff. It's been played by Gamsky. And in the first round, Carolina played it against Maxine Lagarde. And I think this is good because I like the idea of the bishop being here rather than being on E7. But anyway, he played Bishop B7. Uh, Aroni is the most famous player for playing this. Close variation of the Roy Lopez, and he plays this move. Now he really is threatening to take this knight and take this pawn. So he needs to do something about that threat. Mm. And he plays this. Now at this stage, you could get the marshal, because you get C3 being played, and black launches out with D5. This, most people don't want this to be played against them. In the first game between Kasparov and uh, Short in their World Championship match, it looked like this might happen. But I think Kasparov played A4. A4 yep. is another way to stop the marshal, apparently. He, he played it in games one and three. Yeah, I know he won game one. I don't know what happened in game three. He lost, well, he lost with... Short lost both games one and three. Did he? And then he fired... His second, uh, Lubomir Kovalik. I was actually up in London that day. I was at Preston yeah. Bridge. Um, they even had some sort of TV interview asking us who, who we thought would win. And the entire room thought Kasparov would win. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, he played another anti martial system, this move. And this got played. He plays it quite unusual here, Maxime Lagarde does, because normally this, you play C3, and normally this knight comes around here, and it can either come here or here. It's normally heading for this square. 
that can be a bit of a problem sometimes. Sometimes you can play this right up to here and you can play the move to e4 and your king comes around here and his rook comes across here and you can get quite a strong attack. Anyway, here's what we do with this, a3. So you decide to play a different way. Now, what move would you play there? Because I think his move is rather for funny. It's not, not the first move that would appeal in me. This should be three. tough. Sorry? This should be, this should be three, looks reasonable. Yeah, that's one move that I think a lot of people would think about playing. Um, A4? Yeah, but if you wanted to play A4, you would have expected him to play it a few moves ago when he played A3, really. Mm. I would say one of the moves that appeals to me is Bishop G5. Yeah. That yeah. looks the most natural move to me. Mm-hmm. He actually played the move bishop to d2. I think this has been played before. Knight e2 is actually the most played move in this position. Oh, and then g3 and f5. Is that the point, Colin? Well, knight e2. Knight e2, g3, f5. Is that the point? Let's have a look. Knight e2, knight d8, knight g3. And then c3, apparently. Well, you've got to keep the knight out of d4. Yeah. Mm. I mean, a3 just doesn't look very impressive to me. And this is a this is a main line, is it, a3? Well, apparently, I have to say that I haven't seen this line before. I've far difficult. more often seen locuses where they play c3 and play this knight around to here and here. And yeah. then they normally go into here or here. That's the way that the vast majority of people... I say, I'm getting this sort of stuff all the time on the internet. I guess, I guess White's just... White players in, the, in these sorts of positions are just looking for some, something different. It's not, not necessarily best, but something different to... Well, he plays keep, something... Keep, that, keep freshening it up, I suppose, because... Well, he played players, this rather modest move, but players. this has been played before. What's the idea? That's a good question. Uh, well, you. later on, the idea comes to play B4. But uh, really? it's not a major obvious that you're going to play that move. It, it, it may or may not dissuade the knight from going to A5 as well, but I don't know if that's a big priority for White. Well, I would have thought that quite a normal way to play here was, was to play your knight back and just play C5. Yeah. But, uh, well, you did play his knight back. But the book's quite critical of him, but I noticed that this is the move that's being played most in this position. It says here, this timid move costs around 10 minutes, and such is a natural reaction to an opening novelty. Worth considering was not the no less reserved H6. H6? Yeah, well, I would have thought seriously playing H6 because I like the fact that he hasn't put his bishop on G5. I would have thought going h6. Really? Well, he came in here now. I think Maxine Lagarde. Tried well, it, that kind of puts the damper on c5, doesn't it? Well, it does, yeah. He's got to do. Oh, we can't leave it there. Well, he could leave it there. He could play knight e6. And I think knight e6 might have been the best move. But he decided to play this move. And I must admit, all the computers seem to think that this position is already pretty good for white. Now, if it had been me, I definitely would have played c6 here, because when I play the Archangel, I often end up with situations like this, and I invariably do decide to play c6. You want to increase the scope of this bishop, don't you? He went and played this move. And 
Well, what move would you play if you were white hair? But on the other hand, Colin, but what you know, white somewhat shut his white squared bishop in as well as well by the pawn on d5. So uh, yeah, it doesn't look very really good at the moment, but it eventually no, and it, doesn't. And, it, and if I'm just looking at, you know, if I reroutes that bishop to c2, you know, play c3 and bishop c2, then then he's taking the protection away from the d5 pawn. So yeah, that's I'm, right. If I'm playing white on this position, I'd be a bit scratching my head about how I can hold my d5 pawn and do something with my b3 bishop. Well, if he's really worried about that, he can always play c4. Yeah. But he actually played the best move here. He played A4. Yeah. And this apparently is the best move. Hmm. And they reckon Ding Lorenz should have just sort of sat tight and just played F6. Well, it's still not obvious how White's going to penetrate his position. But he played F5 here, and this has been quite strongly criticised. So now we got this swap off. Swap off. And now, g five. No, he can't really go into e six. Well, I suppose he could go into e six. I um, was thinking of queen h five as well. To follow up oh. with queen h five. Now, if you play c four, he can't play b four because the bishop a four skewers the queen and rook. That's right. And c four is exactly what he did play. Explosive move. Well, <laughs> anybody did, got got that? Well done. Can, can you just just <laughs> before you play that? Could could White not play Knight takes e4? Sorry, Knight takes e5. Pardon? Um, instead well, of, instead of c4, Knight takes e5. Yeah. Okay. okay. Let's play Knight takes e5. I'll play. Oh, yes. See what you mean. And then d6. You've got those check, yeah. Ooh, interesting. Uh, yeah, you it's a swap know. off, though, isn't it? Yeah, it is. All right, yeah, not necessarily. It just looked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's tempting. It, like, it was yeah. considering. It's a tempting idea. Yeah. Well, it's good that you can see those things because. In some places, it might actually win. Exactly. So those are the sort of things that you should be on the lookout for. Anyway, he decided to play C4. Exclamation mark. Oh, it actually says premature would be knight takes E5, D takes E5, D6... We never saw this move, did we? All right, let's go back. Ah. Ah, good point. The bishop dances away. Yeah, well, I probably say this. Or, or you swap off another. Well, you've got from six bishop. Hmm. Yeah, but what happens? I want to take Spitzer. Spitzer to F6. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Hmm. Uh, sorry. We've got C4. Knight to F7. I must say, White's position looks nice, but it's still within this position. He played this move. <laughs> Slightly cheeky move. So maybe he should have stopped that in some sort of way. Because he can't take it now, can he? Because of the Bishop A4. Um, it's a whole rook. Yeah. Oh, Ding Loren continued to play bad moves. White now found a nice move here. It's not the sort of move you'd think of easily. Queen 
Queen C1? No, he'd probably just go out six against that. He may even go G4. G5. Sorry? HG5. I thought, I thought for a minute that Gordon was going to go G4. Yeah, I was wondering if the G4 was actually a good move in this position. <laughs> <laughs> it, it usually is a good move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, G4. <laughs> it's usually a good move that you're playing the Yugoslav attack. <laughs> it's often a good move then. Doesn't quite have the right feel about it. But... Yeah. Otherwise, I would normally sit on my hands if I was thinking of playing G4 in most positions. <laughs> Especially on move one. I would sit on my hands till I came to my senses and realised that I should right. get a hold of my e-pawn. But he actually played this move. Oh. Maybe he was worried about G4 himself. Yeah. Um, we we'll just go back to Gordon's suggestion. I, I didn't I didn't hear Gordon what your what your suggested move was. Did you say H4? Were you suggesting H4? Bishop says G5. Followed by we hope. Uh, well, up to H5. Uh, yeah, but you're winning two pieces for a, a piece and a pawn if you do that, Gordon. Just loses material. Loses material. He's got two pieces on it, and you got two pieces on it. You need three on it. Mm. Anyway, he played this move just in place, case he plays Queen C5. Now he just moved this here. Mm -hmm. I think one of the ideas now is to play b4, and you're finally getting to see why he moved his bishop to d2 <laughs> all those moves ago. Hmm. Come on then, Gordon. Gordon's going to tell us the next move. <laughs> I think that's a hint. <laughs> Go on, Gordon. Go. Pretend it's the start of the game, Gordon. <laughs> He's gone all shy. Well, he played the move. Is it G4, Colin? Well done, it is. G4. Yeah. Also good is B4. Yeah. That transposes into one of your games, Gordon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But after move 22, we're back in a mainline grob. <laughs> you say that, Martin, but I was once going for a game of mine and I got to about move 44 and it trans... You know when you follow it on how many... Um, you know these things that show you how many views there are to every position? And I got to about move 44 and there are about 123 moves you know, views of this particular position, which meant that somebody had previously, by a totally different order of moves to me, transposed into the same game as I had in the ending. Was it King and Pawn versus King? Uh, no, it wasn't. There were still <laughs> a few pieces, so I was quite surprised that the same position had occurred in some other game. Right. Anyway, you go Queen F3 here. It's quite a nice ending to this one. Bishop d8. I'm not entirely sure what Maxine, well, I know what he's probably planning now. He's probably planning something nasty against this g4. Well, h4, isn't it? So he went f4. Is that threatening h4? Apparently, white was intended to take this. Yeah. And when he takes with the knight, play knight f3. Oops. What was that? So queen g4, and so he went here. So he's losing this nice square. So he finally played b4. Now he's played this move. And now he takes this. This actually turns out to be quite a strong move. It's difficult to know what to take back with. If you take that with the bishop, he plays d4. 
And after Bishop takes, he goes knight f3. Present to win a piece by taking the bishop and win the pawn by playing knight takes g5. There's a pin on the rook at e8, isn't there? Yeah, that's right. That's yeah, there the, is. That's the main feature of the position, I think. So anyway, he took here. Powerful play. Mm. He went knight here. Very tricky. Knight of seven. Bishop went here. Bishop c7. B b6. Yeah. And now he played quite a surprising move. I don't think he played the best move here. The best move is supposed to be rook b1. Who did he surprise? He actually played the move queen f5. Not a move you'd expect. No. <laughs> Look at White's pawn structure. <laughs> He's trying to hold on desperately. Yeah, it's not the best pawn structure in the world, is it? There's, um... Yeah, but he's got a nice square for his knight. It, it, well, his pieces are, are very good, of course, but... Yeah, it's, it's nice <laughs> well, he played... Is this right? D6 here, he's played. I was going to say count the pawn islands. If this was a junior coaching session. Yeah. Well, he decided to take this with the rook. Now he played rook b1. Knight d8. And now he found a very nice move. What move would you play here? Good one. Um, yeah. Is it B7? Yeah, B7. <laughs> you can't take with a knight because knight e4 wins the rook. So he takes with the bishop. Can you see the next move? Rook takes. No, because he's got knight takes. Oh, I thought we'd be idea with knight e4. No. It was just an extension. Oh, uh, yeah. You, well, we get it back. Yeah. You got, yeah, got more pieces off the board then. Yeah. It's no, got a more elegant than me to finish than that. Wins a piece. Sort of overloading, I think. Yeah, yeah, it is to do with overloading, yeah. It's obviously not an easy move to say. Bishop uh, A5. It's about A5, yeah. Yeah. Mm. And if he, if he moves the light square bishop, he just takes the dark square one. <laughs> He's now threatening bishop takes knight, followed by rook takes bishop. And he can't move this one because then the bishop on B8 is just there to be taken. So it's quite a nice game, but it was one game, it was a game where one person played really well. I think the other person played pretty badly for someone who's ranked number three in the world. Yeah. Uh, at the moment, he seems totally out of form, to be quite honest, Dean mm. Loren. Very, very powerfully played by, by what I've ever thought. Yeah. I'll tell you what, though, Maxime Lagarde, he's, he's a tied leader in this, but the other day he played in a classical chess and he finished on a minus five score. Yeah, he had a shocker. Mm. So... so if the Candace had been immediately after that, I don't think he would have gone in with much of a chance of winning. Um, I actually do think at the moment that Nefer Manchley has got the best chance of winning because he's playing pretty right. well, I think. I anyway, this game was between Maxine. 
Lagarde and Nepo Mansley. Shall we take a, I seem to recall that I'll take a few minutes off. I seem to recall yep. that Lagarde went into the candidates on poor form, didn't he? And suddenly, uh, suddenly did really well. I don't know, but he didn't well, officially qualify for it because Rajabov did, but Rajabov yeah, yeah, didn't yeah. want to play. Um, so he kept, got in as first reserve. I can't remember what his form was like before that. He's been having a pretty bad time in the Sicilian when he's played the Nardov. Uh, he'd lost two games in that tournament. And he also lost in London a while back when he played the Sicilian Nardov. Trouble with the Nardov is there's just too many things that White can play against it. Did you see what Mac, did you see what Carlson played against the Nardov? It's quite funny, really. Was that Queen D3? Was that Carlson? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's also played Rook G1, but I think Rook G1 is quite a reasonable move. Because although I play the English attack, I play Bishop B3. Uh -huh. um, but often in the English attack, I end up playing my Rook to this square. Not all that unusual. But yeah, he played this move. And I think after this move, he played this move. And eventually he switched his Queen to this square. But yeah, he ended up winning that game, didn't he? Was it against some young Russian, I think? Yeah, yeah, it must be in the But one of the, the moves that's really gained a lot of popularity in recent years is a move that Bobby Fischer originally made popular. And now they've got a whole book on it. And it's this move. The idea is just to go C4 and C5. But I've been playing that against another thing. You play this, Julian, I think. Julian's you play this, Julian? So why, why do you need to prepare G4 in this Nidal, but not in this Savannigan? There's a guy... Uh, well, I always should take it sometimes. But there's a guy called Goff and Chess. Has anybody seen him? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He's a very strong player, actually. And he's been playing this against this. I think the idea again is just to go here and play this. And it's actually quite an interesting system. And I've played it online a few times. You had anybody play that against Julian? Because you played this, haven't you? No, Julian's not in the call. Isn't he? Oh, he's not. He's... I can see his... Um... He is, yeah, Julian. Oh, is he? Oh, sorry. There you go. I'm miscounting. Have you had anybody play this against you, Julian? I don't think he's at the... Um... You're on mute, Julian, by the way. I think he's gone for a comfort break. We no, can't hear him. You're on mute, Julian. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just yeah. in the eye. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, Captain Sex plays this. It's the check. How oh, does they? Yeah. Well, it's black. What are you decided to be talking about? Uh, well, I, I found that guy called Goff and Chess was playing this. And so oh, I've played it a few with times. What, with what colour? Oh, uh, with white. I think the idea is to leave your king in the centre. Uh, probably to play g4 quickly. Yeah. Well, let's see what the most popular move is. a4 is the most popular move. Okay. Now, bishop e3, that's... Well, one of the moves you can play here is Queen D2. But I think one of the ideas is to go Rook G1 and G4. It's just a new way of playing it, which I, quite appeals to me. Okay, we ready? Yep. Okay, well, this game, Maxine Lagarde was playing against Nepo Manchley. So it was quite a big game. 
If Nepo Manchley won this game, he would go in with a really high score. So even the over players probably wanted Maxine to win this one. Now for many years I played this move. In more recent years I've started playing knight d2, the tarot. The idea of knight d2 is that if he plays this move c5, which he almost certainly will, you can prop up your centre with, uh, well, I'll show you what I mean. If he plays c5, not necessarily here, let's play this first. And you can just prop up your center. And then you can play this move. I don't particularly like this move. I think I've seen this in one of your games now, Colin, where this move gets played. Yeah, yeah, you can't do that. Yeah. There's, um, there's some other line you can play against Knight F3 as well, which I can't remember, but G5 is bad. One. And uh, it's kind of okay. Yeah, I saw something about that recently in um, one of these new interests books. I was watching. Anyway, he played the move that I used to play. I actually had four games against Matthew Anderson in this mm -hmm. variation. He came out two and a half, one and a half up on me. He's quite a strong player. Bobby Fisher once had this move played against him. If you just go Bishop D2 against that, the game actually went like this. And Fisher went here. And after this move, he played this move. And this move got an exclamation mark. <laughs> He just deliberately played it to make his king go there. And the second he'd done that, he moves it back again. <laughs> anyway, this move got played. This is the most normal move. I used to play this, and I used to play this move. You end up nicking these pawns. Uh, but white actually gets quite a bit of play for, for it. Mick Artel once played this move. It's normal to go here. You normally get something like this being played. I actually had this in a correspondence game recently where I actually was playing the black side of it. I'll play this. I think Kasparov, uh, not Kasparov, Karpov has played this move. Who play this move to play this? All this is mainline opening theory. Bobby Fisher, though, used to play this move. And the, I think one of the ideas is to come here with your bishop and it becomes quite can become quite a strong piece. Anyway, Maxine played this move, which is also possible. H5. If anybody plays this against you, you shouldn't allow them to play the move h6. Because you, then you've got to play something like g6 and you weaken your dark squares. So it's always a good idea to put the brakes on this with this move. And knight f3 is the most popular move now. Rook b1 got played in this game. b6. Queen here. Rook g8. You can't go castles because of this. So he has to find another way to defend it. You could have gone king f8. <laughs> Apparently this was all played quite fast and so never managed, it must have been in his opening theory. I have to say though, that this wouldn't be my choice of opening. Oh, is he going to go in there? No, why would he go in there? Oh, don't need to do Now he played this move. 
This looks rather anti-positional, but this is not at all unusual to play like this. You really want to open the position up. Anyway, Black gets rid of his light squared bishop, which is often a bit of a problem piece in this line. And now he's placed this. What's, what's wrong with queen takes e5 check? Yeah. Uh, not a lot, really. I think he would just go here and probably play this. Mm. Mm. So that's why you probably... I'm oh, sorry. That's why you pro I suspect that's why he avoided that. I don't think he's got a completely bad position at the moment, though. Well, Maxine played that, and this move is actually given an exclamation mark. Bring the queen to the other side. Now, for some reason, Napoleon actually did something that's really quite anti-positional here. And most uh, French players would not play like he does. He played them with C4. You should you normally try to maintain the tension. At some stage, you might want to play knight C6 and try to attack this pawn more. So I'm not really sure what his purpose was in doing that. Now, my computer wants to keep on playing rook takes rook here for some reason, but Maxine doesn't seem to like it. Now he played a very strange move. Mm. Very strange. Maybe he just didn't want to let the queen in here. Maybe he wanted might, to move. He might follow up with a bishop sack, you know. Sorry? He might follow up with a bishop sack. Bishop sack on h6. You think that's what he was worried about? Yeah. Well, maybe. And then coming here with the queen to take this pawn. Yeah. Maybe. The only explanation I can think of, anyway. As good an explanation as anything, I think, Tim. A4. King E8. So it seems like he wanted to move his king and he didn't want the queen coming into here, I think. Is he trying to get castled? <laughs> uh, I don't know what he's trying to do, really. <laughs> I have to say that... You beat me to it, Steve. I was yeah. going to suggest a short castles. And <laughs> <me to do. laughs> Actually, uh, another, uh, another observation I had, when the, when, the, when the king was on f8 and the rook was on g8, if you nodded off for a few minutes, you, you could easily come up with some stupid move like Bishop takes h6, assuming black was castled when it actually wasn't. And I have to say that my initial reaction to this, I, I quite like white's position, but I would try to play f4, knight g3 and f5 if I had this position, I think. That's, that's the plan that appears to me. Anyway, he played... 22, rook d2. Uh, rook b4, wrong. But according to my computer, it should have taken. Well, apparently, he seemed to think this would cure his problems. But Maxime Lagarde doesn't seem to be very worried about his rook. Should he take the exchange or not? Well, my computer thinks he should play 97, which is what he did play. <coughs> F5, B5 first. B5. Um, F5. 
And my computer thinks this is quite good. You can get the exchange back any time you like. Oh. So let's go back to this position. He actually played his mic back to E7. It's always rather nice when people repeat moves because it tells you that they would be happy with a draw. Which usually suggests they don't think their position is particularly good. What was the <laughs> I like his next move. It's still hard to see that he's getting anywhere. Yes. His next move. Try to guess his next move. Hand over the bishop there, so perhaps it's bishop d6. <laughs> it's actually bishop e7. Oh, right. What do you think he played now, though? G4. Sorry? G4. G4, well done. That is the move. Was good. Well, Gordon, we get that one. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, he does. It turns out to be very strong. I don't care because I'm staying on this diagonal. I think he would take play. Queen takes pawn now, wouldn't you? But he didn't. He played this move. Let's get the queens off. No thanks. Find a way to get to your king. No, uh, king g2. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This position is still fantastic. Queen a7. Queen a7. King e7. Queen a3. King d8. Queen d6. Mm -hmm. Well, what are you going to play now? It's just threatening to take your pawn, I think. Mm -hmm. Just take a couple of pawns. And you can't move your queen away because e6 happens. Well, he played this desperate move. Well, she'll just take her and pass on. And after he took he went here, he just went there. End the game. Quite a nice game, really. A game where he showed good control over the dark squares, I think. Really, but... Uh, the French can be quite lead to some quite difficult positions. I always found that playing against the French when I played knight c3 can be quite a positional struggle. So uh, I know how he felt. That was a good win for him, and uh, it's just as well he did win because if he hadn't won, Nepo Manchley would be almost running away with the uh, candidates at the moment. But as it is, they're both on four and a half. I think Caruana is on three and a half. So uh, he's still got a chance, I think. I wouldn't write Carolina off, yeah. Very strong player. Yeah. Anyway, that's all the games I intended to bring you tonight. I thought they were quite good games. Yeah, yeah. Nice games. Yeah. Men's Candidates Part 2 taking place. Hmm. Well, I think it's about May, isn't it? All right. They were supposed to play on a while back, but then they cancelled it again. Yeah, yeah. Which was a bit disappointing, I thought. Is it reconvening in the same place? It was somewhere in Russia, wasn't it? Uh, Ekaterinburg. It was a place called Yekaterinburg. Ekaterinburg. Yeah.
Yeah, so uh, so who's going to win then, do you think? Oh, it's hard to say. Uh, I think the Brav and uh, Nepo, Nepo will both be very highly motivated given their position in the tournament. Yeah. Well, if, if Karan had just came back and won his first game, I would say he'd be right back in it. Yeah. And somehow I wouldn't be surprised if he did just that. I think Caruana is one of the best prepared players opening-wise in the world. And uh, I wouldn't be at all surprised to see him come back. Uh, but I wouldn't mind Nepa Matthew winning it because he's the sort of guy who fights in every game and he creates a lot of chances, but he takes a lot of risk. And if he played Magnus, I don't think it would end with 12 draws and then, you know, the normal knockout, which is what's ended up last time. And the time before that, I think with Karyak and it was one game each, won it with 10 draws. I don't think that would happen if Nepo Manchi plays him. I think there'll be several decisive games. I don't think they'll all go Magnus's way either. So uh, I wouldn't mind seeing him win it really. Is Magnus slowly losing his grip, do you think, Colin, uh, looking at other games he's played? Uh, well, some of the times he's, he's been playing a lot of these rapid plays, but sometimes I think he is almost insulting towards his opponents, some of the things he does. I mean, say yesterday he played Ding Loren and he was top of the tournament and Ding Loren was bottom. And he played this ridiculous A6 move on about move three and just thought, there's no point to that move at all. He just did it to get out of opening theory. And he was, it's almost like he was saying, you know, I can beat you no matter what I play. <laughs> and so I think sometimes he can be a little bit cocky. Uh, but I, I think he's only fractionally better than these guys. You know, if you look at all the games they play, I, I think he is the best, but I don't think he's the best by much. Petrosian once said that the world champion was the first amongst many equals. And uh, I think we've got a situation rather like that at the moment in the world of chess, where Carson may be the best, but it's only microscopically. And uh, he could easily come and slot up. I wouldn't make him a big favourite to win, keep his world title, you know. I wouldn't be at all surprised if Fidrova in the next three or four years came along and uh, he became the most dominant player. I definitely think Fujirova will eventually win the world title. Is that how you say his name? Sorry? Is that how you say his name? Well, I, I called him Ali Fujirova. <laughs> I don't Firuja. Firuja. Close enough. Firuja. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Well, there are some things you're never quite sure how to pronounce them. It's like, is it the pits or is it the perk? I called it the perk for many years before somebody told me I was wrong. You know. Anyway, that's all the games. Call it done. what you like, Colin. Sorry? Call it what you like. <laughs> well, that's right. <laughs> I can call it the perk. Yeah. It's the same with the Sloveni gun. There's a guy who oh. reckons... He's about, is it Malcolm Payne who thinks he's about the only guy in the world that can say the name properly? <laughs> I thought it was the Chevin engine. No, is it something like that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sounds as good as anything. Anyway, that's it. Well, well done, Colin. That's great. Colin. <laughs>